So with that, uh, we'd like to move on to uh, our next uh, agenda item. And this is focused on background information and task force orientation. Uh, we have three present presentations here. We're gonna start with uh, Jim Bennett from BOEM, who will present on uh, uh, the BOEM Offshore Renewable Energy Program, or OREP as it is often uh, called. Uh, uh, Jim will be followed by uh, Idrissa Boubet, also who will be speaking about task forces and the specific charter for the Gulf of Mexico task force. And then a final presentation from David McDuffie uh, from the Office of Renewable Energy Program, and he will be describing the leasing process. Um, we'll do each of these uh, each of these presentations. They're each about 10 minutes long, and then we will pause for uh, questions at that point. So I invite task force members, if you do have uh, questions to better understand what's being presented along the way, please jot them down and we'll bring them all up. Uh, or we'll get to all of them when we uh, get to the, to the clarifying questions section. Um, finally, just so everyone knows, it could be evident that uh, the facilitation team will be managing all of the slides for the presenters. And so uh, just please say next or, or go on or next slide, please. And, and we'll make sure we move in, a, in, in an efficient manner. So with that, uh, I will invite uh, Jim Bennett from uh, the Office of Renewable Energy Programs to uh, provide an overview. Okay, well, I think I'm on video and hopefully you can hear me all right. <clears throat> yep, you sound great. Good. Um, I wanna thank you, Eric, and I wanna thank uh, uh, Director Lefton, Governor Edwards, and uh, Regional Director Mike Slaughter for those uh, excellent opening remarks. Uh, to help provide what I'm also going to provide, which is some uh, context uh, from the federal perspective. Uh, and we really appreciate this opportunity for information exchange. Um, not next yet. <laughs> um, and uh, again, I'm the program manager and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to provide you some federal perspective and provide context uh, for the Gulf of Mexico effort as part of a, a larger national effort. And we're also going to hear uh, from other speakers in this session with regard to the uh, uh, leasing process uh, and the role of the task force. Next. Thank you, Eric. Uh, first off, um, we want to note that uh, 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 for those of you who aren't familiar with BOEM, we're the bureau within the Department of the Interior that oversees the development of our energy and, that, and mineral resources on almost two and a half billion acres of the nation's outer continental shelf or, or OCS. The OCS extends from the three mile line of state jurisdiction out to the full extent of the EEZ or exclusive economic zone, approximately 20, 200 miles offshore. Um, we operate under the OCS Lands Act. Uh, notably, this is the same act that we operate the oil and gas program. Uh, and as modified with the Energy Policy Act of 2005 uh, to generate uh, and lease for energy from sources other than oil and gas. Uh, we have regional offices in, in Alaska for frontier oil and gas, the Pacific for legacy oil and gas, as well as great potential uh, for uh, floating wind projects. The Gulf of Mexico, of course, which produces, as you're probably aware, 25% of the nation's oil and gas, uh, domestic oil and gas production, uh, and, and now may be contributing on a renewable basis as well. And, and the Atlantic Outer Continental Shelf, which in which uh, the, the key factors come together, the wind resource, the buildable environment, and uh, excellent markets uh, for the development of wind energy. Next. Um, Combined with this, uh, we have very clearly laid out uh, administration goals and President Biden through executive order of 14008 uh, has called for the interior department to in increase the development of responsible renewable energy on public lands and waters. And that includes the first ever national goal to deploy uh, 30 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030. Uh, this has a great potential, uh, among other things, of creating nearly 80,000 jobs. Next. Okay, um, 
I want to note, and it's very important to note that this is a little different than oil and gas. It requires quite a bit. If you could back up just a little bit, Eric, uh, it requires not only federal activities, but a lot of state leadership next. Uh, the most obvious example of which uh, is the Block Island wind farm, which is actually in state waters, not on the outer continental shelf, but is an initiative that the state moved forward with. That example uh, is also supplemented by next um, state goals, which is critical to this industry because uh, the the electrical electricity resource needs to be be consumed. Uh, pretty much as it's generated, uh, storage is not nearly uh, as 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 ubiquitous as it is in the oil and gas industry. And the states have laid out very aggressive renewable energy goals. Uh, uh, but aside from renewable energy goals, next, uh, they've laid out on the East Coast very specific offshore wind targets, uh, and this includes over nine gigawatts for New York and seven and a half from New Jersey and 5.6 uh, in, uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, and beyond that, uh, which is critically important, next, aside from these targets, they've actually uh, initiated offtake e efforts. And these uh, these offtake efforts of buying the electrical resource or directing the utilities to buy the electrical resource uh, have really resulted in an explosion of the offshore wind market uh, on the East Coast in the last five years. Uh, we're looking at goals that exceed uh, 30 gigawatts and offtake that has already identified over 20 gigawatts. Next. So uh, on the outer continental shelf, uh, as of last year, we uh, finally have our first steel in the water, two turbines off of uh, Virginia, known as the Coastal Virginia Offshore Wind Project, or CVAL. Uh, this is uh, with uh, the Dominion Energy in the state of Virginia. Uh, and uh, Orsted served as the contractor, um, and um, it's, uh, it's it's the first step. But if you see that little dot out on the horizon, just uh, just under the pictures, um, that's a survey vessel. The day we were offshore, and that was surveying for a construction operations plan for a two gigawatt wind farm uh, to be built off of the lessons learned from this uh, pilot project, this research project. Next. Um, in addition to CVAL, I think it's very important to note that we just approved uh, the Vineyard Wind Project, the first commercial scale uh, project uh, off the East Coast. And uh, Vineyard Wind will be submitting a, a facility uh, design report and a, f a facility installation report to move forward with construction of that project. Um, I want to also note, uh, in terms of activities, which are touched on by uh, Director Lefton as well as others, uh, we've conducted eight competitive lease sales and have 17 active leases. We've uh, approved 11 site assessment plans as well as a general activities plan for the Block Island Cable to Shore and the research plan for the Coastal Virginia Project or CVAL. Uh, 14 COPs have been submitted and 10 are currently under active review. We expect two more uh, in the next few months. We've issued 11 guidance documents uh, and we have 15 major environmental studies underway uh, of approximately a, a total of about $5 million. So we have a lot of activities going on. Next. And uh, with all those activities, this is what we anticipate uh, next over the course of the uh, coming decade. Uh, in addition to the CVAL project and Vineyard Winds approval, we have South Fork, Revolution Wind, and skip that, Skipjack on the near-term uh, horizon. But we're looking at a dozen or more projects, probably more in the neighborhood of 15, maybe as many as 18, over the course of the coming decade to meet the goals that the state have laid, has laid out. Uh, it's going to be a very active time in the Atlantic region. 
However, um, that doesn't come without certain issues as well as opportunities. Next. Um, the most obvious of which is, is employment. Uh, we are looking at uh, 10,000 jobs for a commercial scale uh, wind farm development. We also have industrial synergies, uh, which, uh, as has been pointed out a couple of times, uh, the Block Island project, the foundations were built uh, in Louisiana and 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 and, and uh, barged up uh, to uh, to Block Island to Rhode Island. If you can back up just a little, Eric. Um, uh, and having said that, uh, we also note that the installation vessel is being constructed also in the Gulf of Mexico region. Uh, we have turbine size as, as, as an issue, a very positive one for, for uh, uh, electrical production, uh, but it also raises some issues with regard to visibility and impacts. Uh, we have transmission issues in that we have to examine whether we're using the most effective uh, and and a uh, way to develop the transmission resource. Um, okay, and we have radar issues, both commercial and military. Uh, in addition to that, we are looking at uh, wildlife issues, uh, such as the northern right whale in, in, the, uh, in the Atlantic. And uh, if you could continue next, please. Uh, as I mentioned, visual effects, uh, coastal communities are certainly concerned uh, about visual effects and commercial and rec next commercial and oh, navigation, uh, which basically defines as a, as a fundamental parameter of uh, where offshore uh, we can, we can develop uh, wind without conflicts. And finally, commercial and recreational fisheries, which is of great concern uh, on, on the East coast. Uh, but the, uh, the example that's been set in the Gulf of Mexico is something that we uh, hope to emulate. Uh, all of these issues are, are addressed to a number of different processes, including the National Environmental, process, National Environmental Policy Act process, uh, as well as uh, National Historic Preservation Act, uh, Endangered Species Act. And we're gonna talk a little bit more in just a couple of minutes about that. But all of these issues are, are addressed uh, largely through interaction with stakeholders in the public, and most importantly, with the intergovernmental state task forces, such as this one. Uh, so we are looking to build upon the experiences we've had with 15 or so intergovernmental state task forces on the East Coast uh, to develop the program in the Gulf of Mexico. And with that, uh, I will uh, turn it back to you, Eric. And if there's any questions on this, we'll be more than happy to uh, uh, find the answers for you. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. And, and again, as I said before, we'll uh, just invite task force members to hold any clarifying questions until after the next two presentations, and then we'll we'll take them in turn. So appreciate that presentation, Jim, very much.